Okay, now welcome to the lecture over translation. We've already talked about DNA and RNA and transcription as the first step of protein synthesis, and now we're going to talk about translation, which is the second step in protein synthesis. I'm first going to go over, once again, the big picture of protein synthesis, right? So first we have our DNA in our nucleus of our cells. That DNA is going to replicate itself any time that the cell divides, and so DNA polymerase is going to do that replication over and over to make sure that we have the code in our cells. But when the DNA wants to then express a trait or create the protein for that trait, the DNA needs to create an mRNA in order to allow that code to leave the nucleus. Because if you remember, DNA is way too big to leave the nucleus. So that's the first step of protein synthesis, that transcription, where the DNA is going to convert part of that code for that protein into RNA. RNA polymerase is the enzyme that allows this to happen. And then you end up with that mRNA molecule. Now we're going to talk about the second step of protein synthesis called translation, where we're going to take that mRNA molecule and now we're going to create a protein out of it, which happens at the ribosome. So once again, translation is creating proteins from the RNA, so from RNA to protein. The purpose of this is to, to decode the mRNA to create the protein. And then specifically, another RNA called tRNA, transfer RNA, will carry the amino acids to the ribosome that decodes the mRNA three bases at a time. So the mRNA here has found the ribosome. It's going to go into that ribosome, and that ribosome is going to read that coded sequence on that messenger RNA. So you can see the coded sequence down here on the mRNA inside that ribosome. Now these tRNAs up here is a different type of RNA. And they have a three base sequence of RNA on each of those tRNAs. And so every three bases on the mRNA molecule is going to match to a complementary pair with a tRNA. At the top of that tRNA molecule is an amino acid. And so if you see here, we have a three sequence A, A, A in our mRNA and a U, U, U on the tRNA because that's what matches with one another. So this is going to match on that mRNA molecule at the ribosome and now it's going to add that lysine amino acid to the previous amino acid tryptophan. Now the next three code, G, A, U is going to match with the tRNA, C, U, A because that's the complement. G goes to C, A goes to U, and U goes to A. And now it has that asparagine amino acid that's going to tack on to the lysine. And so it's going to grow this amino acid sequence, which is going to end up becoming a protein. So once again, that tRNA molecule has those three different bases at the bottom and then the amino acid up at the top. Those amino acids are then joined together to create a protein. So where does translation take place? Translation takes place in the ribosome, right? Transcription happened in the nucleus. Translation is happening directly at the ribosome. What are the steps to translation? First, the mRNA is going to leave the nucleus and bind to the ribosome. So here the mRNA is coming out, and now it's going to bind to the rRNA, or the ribosome. Next the tRNA with an anticodon, that's what we call this three base pair sequence on the tRNA, is going to match up with the mRNA here with the complementary pair. So we know that AUG is going to be the start codon, which starts the sequence of the um, protein. And so you're going to see a UAC the complement of that AUG tRNA attached to that AUG, which then that methionine, that amino acid, is going to be that first amino acid in the sequence. Then it's going to take the next three pairs, UUC, you're going to complement with the anticodon AAG from the tRNA, and then phenylalanine is going to attach to the methionine, and you're going to just grow this amino acid chain. So that was the third step, right? The tRNA is going to come into the ribosome. An enzyme is going to join the two amino acids, creating a peptide bond in between those amino acids. The tRNA leaves, and then the next tRNA comes in to add on the additional amino acid. 
The next codon in the ribosome is ready for a new tRNA molecule, so it's going to continue chugging down this mRNA molecule, and the process is going to continue until you hit what we call a stop codon, or a codon on the mRNA that tells the sequence to stop creating the protein. After it does that, the ribosome complex falls apart and releases the new protein. And so that polypeptide chain, that amino acid chain, is going to create that protein. So how does tRNA help with translation? It transfers the amino acids to the ribosome to build the new protein. How is the mRNA translated into amino acids? In groups of three called codons. So if you remember, we were looking in groups of three. Those groups of three we call codons on the mRNA. On the tRNA, we call them anticodons. And those codons code for a specific amino acid. And we use a chart to help us figure out what amino acid codes for each of those. So once again, what's a codon? A series of three mRNA bases that code for a specific amino acid. So we break up the code into groups of three, the codons, in order to find it. We know the start codon is AUG, which always codes for methionine. And then there are three different stop codons. These are the codons that stop the protein from being created. And like I said earlier, you have a chart to help you figure out what amino acid the codon specifically codes for. So there's two different types of charts here. First we have this wheel. And the way that the wheel works is by starting in the center, moving outwards. So you're going to find the first base of the codon. So let's say our first base of the codon is A. And so we're going to start over here in this wheel. Let's say the next is G. So let's say the sequence is A, G, C, right? So we start with the A. You're going to move on to the next circle and find the G in that, in that little pie area. The G is here. And then you're going to find the C, which is right here. And then you're going to know that that codon codes for serine. And so you start from the center and find the three letter sequence from the center going out on the wheel. Now the chart works a little differently. The chart, you're always going to start with the first base on the left. So let's do the same one, right? We did A, G, C. So if we start with the first base, it's A. Now we're going to look at the columns here for the second base. The second base is going to be G. So we'd be A, G. We're going to be in this column here, in this row. And now we're going to look for C. C is lining up here with serine in this box, and so that codes for serine. So there's two different types of charts that you're going to have to learn how to read, which are going to get some practice in this unit using those charts. So once again, here's another version of the chart. We're going to try to use this chart to get our sequence here. So first is CAC. So let's start with our first base here, C. Go to our second base, A. So we're in this row, in this column, in this box here. And then the last is C. CAC codes for histidine. Next, CCA. So once again, C in this row. C this column, so we're here. And then CCA in this row, we find is proline. Next is UGG. U, G, G, tryptophan, and then UGA is a stop codon right here. So in your own time, um, I'm going to have you pause this video, and I want you to find the answer to using the wheel in this instance for this sequence. So go ahead and pause and find the four amino acids from this sequence. Now I want you to double check your answers to make sure you ended up with the same amino acids that we did. Here's another practice to translate the mRNA sequence. Break it up into groups of three, and then you end up with your amino acid sequence. 
So once again, protein synthesis, transcription does DNA to RNA in the nucleus, while translation goes RNA to amino acids on the ribosome. So those two steps, and just a big overview. DNA goes to RNA, which goes to protein, which then expresses the trait because those proteins are made. Now you're going to move on into the next module to watch the amoeba sister video.